Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so I just broke my musical zone because I just realized it was a Laker topic that I really wanted to discuss. Uh, Kyle Kuzma and uh, Spencer Dinwiddie been going back and forth. I don't really know the inspiration behind this. I don't know. They are uh, just kind of going back and forth, left and right. They used to play for the Wizards together, and I guess that tenure left them with beef or whatever. So now they're kind of playing into it at the end of the season. Both of them are uh, in different positions uh, because obviously Kuzma's out of the playoffs at the moment. Uh, and Spencer Dinwiddie's getting ready to get started with the Philadelphia, with the Brooklyn Knicks against the Philadelphia 76ers as a starting point guard. So I don't think this is the time for Spencer Dinwiddie to really be going back and forth with anybody. He's got a bigger fish to fry because he's going to have to try to guard either James Harden or Tyrese Maxey or something like that. So just from a focus standpoint, he already getting off to a bad start, if you ask me. But this whole thing with him and Kyle Kuzma had him bringing up Rick Fox's name. Essentially, what he was referring to was saying that, you know, Kyle Kuzma was the Rick Fox of the 2020 championship. The problem is what he didn't understand about Rick Fox is Rick Fox was the NBA. He was a Laker captain. He was a trio of captains. <laughs> it was him, Shaq, and Kobe. Those were the captains of the team. And I distinctively remember Rick Fox doing a number of things that were big, including hitting big shots and big games that helped win championships and locking up Peja Stojakovic in the playoffs in multiple games in a row. Peja Stojakovic, who was an MVP candidate that year, if I, don't, if I remember correctly, Rick Fox held him to seven points in one of those games. So, like, you got to know Rick Fox's game to really know if that's a good insult. Because to be completely honest with you, Kuzma still hasn't reached where Rick actually went. Rick Fox won in three NBA championships consecutively as a starting small forward in all of them. And he was a key offensive piece, hitting corner threes and ultimately using his big size to get to the line, hit mid-range jumpers and stuff like that. Even though he couldn't dribble worth a lick. I'll be the first person to tell you Rick Fox couldn't dribble, but he didn't turn the ball over very much, which was a very unique thing. He had an old-school 1975 dribbling style, but rarely did any of these defenders who were very good get the ball from him. He was smart, and he made sure that the ball worked around. He didn't hold on to it for too long, and it wasn't any place for that because he had to play with some great stars. But the thing about people, the thing about Rick Fox and the rest of those Lakers that people need to understand is for the times that we were in, you didn't need to be able to have a million different skill sets. You just need to be able to play your role and be in your position properly. It wasn't a whole lot of space to floor this, this, that. You got to be able to shoot this or that. But if it were a situation where you needed to, Rick Fox still would have been fine because he could shoot the three ball very well and he hit it in clutch situations. Not just throughout the game, but down the stretch, at the end of the game, when Kobe had to find somebody because he was giving triple team, he would find Foxy in the corner and how Foxy would hit the shot every time. So, yes, do he and, and Kyle Kuzma both have a championship? Yes. Is Kyle Kuzma a more naturally gifted offensive player? Easily. But defensively, he's not. Rick Fox is a much better defensive player. He truly is. And he hasn't accomplished what Rick has. Even though Rick is, is not the tier that Kuzma is, Kuzma can still teether either way and end up Rick Fox anyway, if it comes down to it, which is a good thing. But not for Kyle Kuzma based on his talent level. So I understand the insult that Spencer Dinwiddie was trying to shoot at him. I just don't think it was the greatest example for, as someone who watched Rick Fox, the majority of Rick Fox's career, I can tell you, this, that insult didn't really hit the way you wanted to. It just didn't. Because those who watch Foxy enough knows that he was a very intricate piece and there was rarely any games that he didn't start for the Lakers. He started, and Derek Fisher started, for all three of those championships, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, all three of the Shaq and Kobe championships, Foxy was a starting point, small forward. And he was an enforcer. This is something else people need to understand about Rick Fox. Rick Fox was dirty. Like, and I'm telling you that as a Laker, he was dirty, bro. The thing about Rick Fox people don't understand and will never understand is that he had a mean streak. When he first got to the Lakers before we won the championship, the thing I used to say about Rick Fox as a little kid was this guy is mean. He doesn't look happy. He looks like he's coming from hell and he doesn't look like he's in a good space. Like, that's what you say about Rick Fox. When he got here, it's like, this dude is mad. And he was mad all year long until we finally won the championship. 
He was mad all year long. I'm telling you, dude was mad. Like, when I say mad, he was in a bad space when he got to this team, and it was evident to a 10-year-old kid, 11-year-old kid. I was like, yo, this dude is pissed off. Whatever's going on in his life, he's taking it out on a lot of basketball players and stuff like that. He's hitting people with elbows. He's pushing people. He was mean until we got the championship. And then I guess somewhere in that time, he met Vanessa Williams, and life got better from there. But that was not a happy basketball player when he got here. He was dirty, and he hurt people <laughs> on purpose, and I stand by that. He used to do it a lot, too. Ask Shaq. Shaq could tell you that dude was dirty. We used to call him pretty Dennis Rodman because he'd come in and try to do stuff that Dennis would do. He'd come in, hit somebody in the, in, 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 the, in the chest with an elbow. Come in, push somebody in the back. Come in, poke somebody in the, in, in, in the side. Like This is stuff that Dick Rick Fox did for our team all the time, especially when he first got here. And as the series and stuff, as the playoffs started to manifest, he started to prove himself as an enforcer, which is why Phil Jackson, the greatest coach in the history of the sport, entrusted him with a third of the captain duties. Right. So we need to give people a history lesson on what's going on with Rick Fox, because a lot of our modern basketball players just weren't alive for a lot of that. They didn't watch that stuff, even though Spencer Dinwiddie's from L.A., so he ain't got no excuse. But. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they, they, they're younger. They didn't watch 2001 Lakers. They didn't watch the Lakers from the years that they were winning like like that, Shaq and Kobe. They don't remember that stuff. They barely remember Kobe and Powell, so they ain't going to remember Shaq and Kobe. But let me tell you, that's the era I'm from. That's where I'm from. I started watching the year before they put that together. 1994 is when I started to be watch, you know, to be a Laker fan, die hard. And that was well before Foxy got here. So I remember the whole Foxy tenure. It was about eight years, seven years of him not dribbling very well, but being reliable on both sides of the floor and ultimately being a big body that we could throw at better players and shut them down. And I ain't never going to let you or anybody else forget what he did to Pedro Stoyakovich in the finals or the playoffs that year, rather. I ain't going to let nobody forget that. He shut that man down and earned my respect forever. So y'all can say what you want about Foxy. You can put him at the butt of jokes and all that, but make sure you do a little history lesson to find out if that joke going to make some sense because you're going to look stupid, Spencer. BDL44, thank you all for watching. Out.